Good morning, everyone. Beautiful day today. Um, for the horses, look at there's little Hazel. Ryder. And uh, Jack. And Pippi. And Pippi. Everybody's around here. Okay, good morning. So, uh, I sure enjoy the horses. So does my lovely wife. Uh, it, it gives us a purpose, gives us reason to get up and enjoy a beautiful day like today. There's the studio. So uh, I've got a little piece I'm working on for uh, a rifle uh, custom guitar. So a pick that I'm doing. I'm going to do a little bit of CAD and explain art cam a bit to you guys. And we'll maybe do a casting and that'll be a great little 10 minute video again for today. And uh, so you guys reach out to a pal. Be kind to your farm animals if you got them. And uh, okay, good morning, good morning. Uh, we were outside there. We let me see if I'm looking good. Uh, we're in the um, milling room. You see a, a four axis milling machine there. And let's loosen this up there. There's a lathe and uh, a bandsaw, drill press, stuff like that. There's a Boto 2500 rubber molds, and there is another milling machine. Okay, uh, thank you, Dimitri, over at uh, New Solution CNC. Bang on company, if you ever need something like this, he's got state-of-the-art machines. So this, these are his older, older machines. Okay, so um, I kind of want to show you how I got to the the guitar pick. Okay, let's uh, turn some colors off here. Let's go like that. Oh, no, wait a second. Uh, like that, okay. Uh, now, this is called... Um, a vector these are vectors line drawings right okay so I can how do I start with this one here okay so what I do is the Phil wanted a, a, a Phil wanted a a guitar pick style pendant okay so uh, this is a there's about four or five different styles of guitar picks and I think this one's a try a trillion or something like that equal size it's quite a nice guitar pick quite heavy um so i laid this out with with line drawings so that the computer can understand is that running okay good yeah uh so i built the first line uh okay this is the word okay so this was his logo so what i did is i took a line drawing uh a tool here and i just built Let's reduce the color of this. And I built lines around his thing. And I had to use a little bit of artistic interpretation right here um, because there's a big solid black line. I don't know if you could see that. So in here, I made that a little bit differently, but it's still the same thing. Okay, so then I, I highlighted this and I, I copied it, copied, and then uh, file. And then, uh, okay, and then I dropped it onto here, onto this, because on, I knew that this was the right size already. So I dropped it onto here and it was not, it didn't conform. So what I did was I took this and I, I altered in this program here, I can stretch them out and alter them and drag them and uh, finish, cancel that. And then, so I stretched it out so it was on the guitar pick really nice. Okay, so then I, I highlight, I, let's say this one here, um, this line here, this line here is the outside of the guitar pick. So I go here, uh, what was that? Uh, right click and then I go shape editor. And then I gave it a height of 1.3 millimeters to start the ball rolling. And so this outside edge here, mm -hmm. if we put this cursor on it, you see down here, 1.3, it tells me the height of wherever I am, 1.3 millimeters. Okay, so then I built away and then this pattern on the back here, uh, it's a texture relief pro, uh, 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 type of, uh, not type of, it's, it's a texture relief uh, function. Uh, I highlight, I wanted, let's say I would use this and then I, I go like that. Let's get this out of the way, get this out of the way. 
and I and I'm telling it I only want it to work in this area right so then I, I set the parameters of this 0 0.8 0 0.3 in height and 50 overlapping 50% and then I asked it to do it so then it created this texture in the background then I just made sure I cleaned up a little bit and that's the guitar pick now these little tabs this tab here and that hold the wax pattern while I'm cutting it in the mill. Now, if I'm lucky, if I'm lucky, over here, look. That's the guitar pick. That's that. So then I, I set I set up the milling program. Well, I didn't set it up. So then I'm, I'm satisfied with this. I go, okay, I put the little, a little, uh, where are we? I put the little loop up here onto it and then close and then we put that and then we close that and then we go back here like that so then i i set this i ask then i built this one around this real straightforward function you just go uh offset vector i altered this a little bit so now i could take that when i go to the can you see the cursor moving Okay, so then I go to the uh, tool paths, right? 3D tool path. And then it asks me, the whole model? No, the selected vector. So it knows just to cut inside of this. So then I ask it to performance function. You know, I, I set up the, it asks me, okay, what size of bit? Uh, what size of bit? Where's the machine safe? There's the tool and uh, the material, the setup and everything like that and where you wanna work from. Let's just bring that up. I'm working from the zero and I'm working from the bottom so that I know how to set, I know how to set the mill up where the bit goes in the mill, okay? So uh, we, we've asked that to do that. We go, okay, oh, we're just gonna cancel it. And then where's the, where's the uh, tool paths? Okay, there's fly. So it created this for me. And I think I've shown this enough time. If you zoom in enough, you actually see this red line is the tip of the bit, the tip of the bit going back and forth in the mill. And so down, up, back, down, up, all the way across, okay? So I saved the red pattern. I saved that red pattern, it's called an MMG file. I saved that to a stick. And I put the stick in the computer and then I asked the mill to cut it. So I'm going to cast the piece now. We're going to cast it and then I'm going to show it to you. So now you can have um, uh, kind of a little bit of a more of an in-depth rundown of where the wax, where that guitar pick came from. How did that, I can't see anything, uh, how that guitar pick happened. Yes, the customer wanted it. He had a thought in mind and then we're we, we, we use this technology to create it in a CAD, a computer-aided design file, and a CAM, computer-aided machining file, and we machine it, the wax pattern, and then I went through the investing process and all that, and um, which you could see in some of my other videos. This is not going to be a super in-depth. This is more or less to kind of break it down for you. Okay, so let's head over to the casting room. Let's cast the piece, and uh, then you can see it finished. Not finished, but at least to a point where... It's cast, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, just kind of clean it up a little bit so you could see. Can you see? It? I'm still gonna make the bail for it. It's got an old ring. I'm gonna take the old ring. It's got the diamonds on top. I'm gonna cut that off, and I'm gonna roll out a piece. And I'm gonna make a a bail for it. It's gonna be a beautiful piece. All right, you guys. Ho. Oh. Okay, so we're moving right along here. We're moving right along. Let's get some safety glasses on, and um, have a little cup of coffee. Because we can't have uh, much of a day if we don't have a cup of coffee. Cheers, you guys. Okay, so, you know, if you're running a jewelry studio, you're either, this, this, you know, I gotta be careful what I say here. There's handmade jewelers, that, that's all they do. They don't do casting. They just sit at a workbench and they hand make things. But if you're an all-around jewelry shop, you're casting, you're hand making, you're doing all of your repairs, you're doing CAD cam. Um, so you, you need to be well-rounded. 
So that's what I'm trying to get at with my videos here. It's not specifically just handmade. I've made handmade things in some of my videos, rings and things like that. I know how to do all that. Been doing repairs for 30 years. But one of my favorite things really is to make something like the CAD file or carve it by hand and then go through the casting process. And for me, I just really enjoy casting. So let's get right at it. We're gonna get right to the casting. Okay, let's get the right pair of glasses on. And uh, we're gonna wind the machine up. How many times do we like to wind the machine up? What? Oh, okay, four times. <laughs> uh, make sure it's balanced. You see there's a catch, you need a big spring in there. And so when the catch catches it, so, so there we go. So, so one, two, three, four. I'm gonna get right at it. Tongs are in the right place. Now, um, look at how seasoned that crucible is. Look at that, that's beautiful, right? You can see through there. I wanna show you an, another crucible I just bought the other day. And uh, it's a, a new crucible. So I made it wet and then I put boric acid all, and I rubbed boric acid around there. So you can see that you can almost see there, see how it's shiny in there? That's, this is a new seasoned crucible. So I, I made it wet. I poured uh, boric acid on there and I, and I made sure it was everywhere, the boric acids um, and the water. And then I let it dry off and then I put it in here and I seasoned it once. But we're gonna use the old gold, the old gold uh, flask for now. Gold in there. And here's the, here's the guitar pick. The empty cavity inside of here is the CAD file that I showed you. Sorry I didn't have any pictures of the wax because I already kind of gone through that. But so I milled the wax and I took that wax and I set it up through here. I weighed the wax with the sprue on it prior to investing it. So I knew through specific gravity how much gold I would need to cast the piece. So I've got the gold in here. I got that all set up, we're wound, we're ready to go. Let's just get right at her. Uh, maybe not. All right. I'm gonna throw the old lighters away from now on. Huh. And I'm using propane and oxygen. I find that over the years, propane was the best. I'm gonna leave this real time. There's a little bit of uh, boric acid. Carbon stirring rod. And that's casting in real time. So, uh, let me get this out a little bit here so I can sit in the book. So we're gonna put this at our go-to spot over there. We're gonna let it cool down. It's not an overly thick piece, so if I were to leave it for five, six minutes, then I'll quench it. Um, it helps when you're doing it like that. It just it just makes cleaning off the investment a little bit easier. Could you just cool down to the touch? Sure, you can. And then you just throw it into a bucket and let it soak for an hour, and the investment gets soft. This isn't plastic cast. This is uh, Randolph and Ransom's 
uh, Ultra Vest Max with band dust. Very forgiving investment. I, I've been using their product uh, for years. Uh, Ransom and Randall. The Ultra Vest Max, it's right in the corner there. Uh, I, I, pay the, I pay the little bit extra and I just use it for everything. I use it for my silver, I use it for my white gold, my yellow gold. So in the long run, I don't have three different boxes of investments sitting around here. Uh, and aging, I just uh, I just use that, and that's my go-to stuff. And you know, with the burnout cycle that I have, and my eye of what I've seen over the years, try not to change things if you if you if you can help it. Like you, getting into a routine for casting is really important. Now I know the big casting houses that got these fancy machines and everything like that. It's a science. When you're do doing a, centrif a centrifugal. Uh, casting machine and you're melting the metal by eye and you're going through a burnout cycle there is a little bit of an art to it where experience and practice is important so with that being said have your coffee reach out to someone today be kind to your farm animals I wish my dogs were out here but they're not they're in the house probably staying warm okay so turn the oven off put the crucible Again, looking for telltale signs of any problems. And there isn't any, right? Now nice and clean. Okay. Now this is already cooled down. Nice button, everything like that. I don't see any problems. Let's put that in my go-to spot. And uh, I'll get back to you guys in a bit. Okay, so it's been a little bit. Um, let's just dunk that in there. Yeah, looks nice. We'll hang the uh, tongs up where they're supposed to go. Now I want to show you so you can really see it. I mean, it's like I cast that and that's the quench now when you're going to watch me and it's not like I'm going, oh, uh, it, oh, it turned out perfect and three days later I've done another one. No, this is it. Okay, so... Now, that little, that discoloration is nothing. That, that, this is just like an oxidization of the metal. There's no pitting or anything like that. This is a beautiful piece, okay? So I'm gonna trim that off and uh, I'm quite pleased with that. That's gonna make a great pendant. Okay, so, a little bit of 220 grit sandpaper on a spindle. Uh, I cut them like that, okay? You just wrap them around the spindle. Okay, anyway, so a bit of sanding here. Look at that. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna go into great detail of finishing. There's enough finish, finishing video, so this is gonna be long enough. I should be wearing my mask. That, that's just gonna polish up perfect. And this is the ring I'm gonna take and I'm gonna make a bale for it like that. So the bale, I'm gonna work on that. And it's gonna go around a beautiful chain like this. Okay, so you guys have a great day. This is gonna be just a beautiful piece. Be nice if I were to include a picture of it finished with this. Maybe not. Okay, I think that's gonna be it for today, you guys. I uh, don't know what else to say. Lots of humming and hawing and the here and there's, and uh, I'm quite pleased with the casting, turned out great. So, that's gonna polish up just great. Yeah, we're gonna cut this, trim this, hallmark it, and that'll be it for today, okay, you guys?